Hello everyone. So today I'm actually going to do a, uh, I feel like I look different on this thing. Oh, I think my seat is a bit higher than normal. Anyway, whatever. Today, sorry, today I'm going to uh, do a Q&A session because I've received quite a few questions recently in the comments and uh, sometimes I'm not very good at keeping up with all of them. And so anyway, I just wanted to do a video where I uh, talk about a couple of those questions. They're just a couple and I just want to address them here because they might be interesting to all of you out there. So uh, yeah, let's start it off right away. The first question I have is from Const Konstantin Martinov. Martinov, I don't know. Uh, he says, uh, hi, I like your videos. Can I ask you a question? What kind of skill do you advise to master in order to become location independent? I only do transcription videos and audios into text and that's it. I tried to translate some text. Sometimes it was okay. Sometimes I had bad feedback. So uh, my advice, and I actually, and I gave this to him, but uh, I feel like he's asking two different things. First of all, he's asking if he should do this transcription or if he should do just text translation. And my reply would be, obviously transcription is working a lot better for him than just translation. So he should definitely stick to, stick to transcription. I, I mean, he might've been asking because I, I do text and I've mentioned a couple of times I don't do transcription. And uh, so maybe that's why he was wondering if it's better to do one rather than the other. Uh, but whatever works best for you is what you should be doing. So if, you, if you're doing written translation and that works best for you, do that. If you're doing transcription and you have more success with that, absolutely do that. Don't, in fact, even when, when you're starting out, if you find what works best for you, go all in on that. Forget the other stuff. Don't try to hedge your bets at the beginning, you know, with this, that, and the other. No, go all in for, in, in this case, in Constantine's case, it will be transcription. Go into transcription and, uh, you know, the videos and audios into text. And if that's what's working, then do that. And in your profile and when you're applying for jobs and everything, that's what you're looking for. Because once you find something that works, then you should go all into that and just keep trying to repeat that, repeat that, repeat that. If he's having issue with just the text translations, then don't don't bother with this. You know, this is the work, you know, what's different between the working world and school is in school, if you're bad at French, but good at math, you should study more French and a bit less math so you can get it better. But in the real world, if you're good at math and bad at French, concentrate on math, you know, and uh, don't try a career in French. And so in the same sense here, I would say, if you're good at something, concentrate on that. Whatever you're good at, whatever you like doing, whatever earns you more money and you can earn a living from, that's what you should be doing to be location independent with one caveat, which um, I, will, I will get to now. And uh, because all of this is true, but he, he asks, what do I need to master in order to become location independent? And this was the second part of the question that I mentioned. Luckily, what he's good at is transcription and audio which uh, or, uh, transcription of videos and audio into text, which can definitely be done online. In fact, it's almost always done online. So that's great. If you want to be location independent, though, you need to find something that you can do while being location independent. This is a big reason, by the way, why I'm not an interpreter. I'm also not an interpreter because I would be a very, very bad interpreter. But a big reason is because I like being location independent. If you're an interpreter, you're not. You have to go to certain locations and interpret for them, whether it be the courthouse or this city hall meeting or that business meeting or whatever it might be. And look, I know a lot of interpreters and they love that. They love the fact that a client will fly them out to DC and to here and to there and they can interpret. And you know, it's a, it's a lifestyle and they love it. So it really depends on you. By the way, nowadays, a lot of interpreting can be done online as well. So you can be location independent for doing quite a bit of interpreting. I think it's a lot harder to start your career in that if you refuse to uh, go meet clients face to face, but it can be done. And in fact, a lot more things can be done online over the phone and in a location independent manner. So if, if what you love, if what earns you money and if what you want to do seems like something you cannot do online, do some research into it. Maybe there's a way that you can. I'm not saying there definitely is, but there might be. But if you want to be location independent, find out what you're good at. If it's already something you can do online, then you're golden. Put all your eggs in that basket, at least at the beginning. Keep trying to work on that only. And uh, But if, you, if what you like isn't something you can do remotely, then I would do research because maybe there is a way to do it remotely. Look, a lot of things are being done remotely now from lawyers to, to doctors. I was recently talking to a doctor and he was saying how 
how much they're doing remotely. Had, you know, there'll be a, a town in Texas where they need something done and they'll hook up to a doctor in LA or Chicago and who even during surgery will be giving advice or saying do this or that or giving diagnosis, whatever. And so, it, yeah, it's very incredible actually. And a lot of people are doing that with, uh, and he, he was talking to me a lot about it. I was enthralled by it. And he said a lot of people, their general practitioner, it'll just be, they'll talk to someone over Skype, you know, depending on their need, obviously, if it's just common cold or something like that, then fine. But if they have something a bit more complicated and they're living somewhere rural or somewhere where they don't have access to very good doctors or doctors with a the specialty they need, they can do it all remotely. So many things can be done remotely. So do some research into that if that's something you're interested in. Okay, that's it for that question. Uh, the next question, we let's see, uh, Maria S. asks, uh, I know your channel is more about freelancing, but could you also do a video about learning Chinese? I would really appreciate it. I'm also learning Chinese at the moment. So uh, this is um, actually something I contemplated doing, but unfortunately, so I have done a video on how I learn in general. So a, a lot of that, in fact, all of that would apply to learning Chinese as well. The thing with Chinese is that it's very different from many other languages. Aside from learning all those weird characters and the tones and uh, and the and a different structure, it also, I mean, the characters themselves, as you know, are not an alphabet. It's the only language being used now that still uses bona fide hieroglyphics to uh, to say something, and so that makes it very different. You don't learn an alphabet and then from there on. So like Korean, I learned the alphabet or, you know, the, the Korean symbols and I can read them. So many times I'll, I can, I can read anything fine, you know, and that's no problem. But many times I need to figure out and try to understand what I'm reading. That's not how it works with Chinese. With Chinese, you need to learn both, like, cause all, they're all different characters. And so you need to learn how to read it, uh, pretty much from scratch for every single character and also what it means. Anyway, it's just a different way to, uh, to go about it. And um, so one of the things that I try to do is I have my, I, here, just a second, I'm going to get my, uh, some of my flashcards. Okay, so here are my flashcards. My flashcards, I usually, I don't know if you can see, I have the, uh, I write the character and I write the tone on top. This is just so I can, uh, I, it just helps me because now, when I look at characters, obviously I don't know the tone just off the top of my head, but at least if I write it with that, it kind of comes second nature. And I can think like, ni shu, and I, and I kind of see the tone on top of it. Anyway, so that's the way I do it. Then on the other side, I, I write the, the pronunciation in pinyin, duin, and then the what it means under it. So I can also cover it this way or that way, uh, however it might be. Um, it's, I mean, yeah, and so, that's how I'll do it. Please excuse my very bad handwriting of writing these characters. But this is the way that works for me. Another way can work for someone else. Uh, otherwise, all the standard things apply. Uh, still, if you, if you want to speak more, find other people to speak with. I've mentioned these other things before, speaking to yourself, or if you find people over Skype, language exchange, all that good stuff, I would definitely do it. What I love about Chinese, though, and what makes it different is every uh, learning the language is a lesson in um, etymology and so and whenever you're learning a new character say you're learning well each character has two different parts or many characters anyway it can get as complicated as you want but many times you'll see the radical here which is this is the radical for hand and then you find the other part which usually has something to do with the pronunciation and in fact this radical for hand and then dang, uh, and that's how it's pronounced and and it means to block and so anyway it makes sense very often if you learn the etymology and to me it helps a lot in learning the actual character so those are the main things that i think are different in chinese as compared to other languages uh, you have the tones and i know you have other languages with tones but for me it's the first language i was learning with tones and you have the characters rather than the alphabet which makes it hard but once again i try to get into the etymology bit and i have a couple books here that talk only about the etymology about Chinese characters and the history of it and all that. In fact, there's one that I recommend. Just a second, I'm going to get it. Sorry, so these are some of the books I have. This is probably the best one out there. Um, it's called China Empire of Symbols by Cecilia Lindquist. It was actually originally written in Swedish and then translated into English, but it's great. It has uh, 
all the history. I mean, it, it's heavy, but it goes through the history of uh, all these characters and how they developed from the uh, from the Oracle Bones to the Zhou period and uh, to modern times. And I like it a lot. This the Chi Chinese language is a shorter one, and I found it also extremely helpful. Uh, and it, it goes through a bunch of the characters. At least it, again, it has them all listed, and it goes through some of the history and and how they how it evolved and why things are the way they are like why things like Beijing was peaking and how that changed and all that I mean I guess most of them cover that there's some others I want depending on your level uh, my level is not that good but uh, this was one that I found quite helpful it is a uh, book as you can see it's in Chinese this is written in traditional Chinese but it talks about again it talks about the characters it's written for school kids I'm pretty sure I mean I know it's written for school kids but it helps someone like me who's learning the characters and and it's interesting that you can go through all these things and try to see where the root and where the character originally comes from and and how it evolved so yeah in terms of just pure Chinese I think that at least is uh, what helped me and uh, otherwise yeah they're the things that are for standard language decide if you're learning reading and writing or speaking and listening and uh, if you want to concentrate on one or the other and that depends on what you want to get out of the language and then you can concentrate on that obviously you need to learn a bit of everything to be able to proceed you can't just ignore the characters just because you want to speak in Chinese but it'll give you a direction that's better and but that's the same for all languages so I won't get into that too much and I'll try to move on because it's already taking way longer than I wanted it to I'll do one more this question is by Daniel Villarreal, um, who uh, who I've talked to quite a few other times. I know he also. Oh, sorry about that. I know he also takes my course, and uh, and yeah, we've and he's also. Uh, I know he's also uh, read my book because he wrote a uh, book review. Thank you once again, Daniel, for the book review. So he wrote a uh, fantastic video. Thank you for posting it, Robert. A quick question: Do you know if citizens and residents of all countries are eligible for Upwork? Greetings from Taipei, Taiwan. So, actually, I looked it up. If uh, any anyone from any country can apply for Upwork, this was a comment on my video of how to sign up for Upwork, and uh, so that's why he was talking about Upwork. And there are some restrictions. I looked it up. So, businesses or individuals in the following countries are not permitted to register for accounts or utilize our platform: Iran, North Korea, Syria, Crimea, Cuba, individual nationals of Cuba. That kind of surprised me. Any other countries restricted by law, this changes occasionally. This is in compliance with federal law. This means US federal law. Upwork is based out of the US, and so that's why it'll depend on that. But aside from that, every other country can apply. If you're in any other country, you can apply for and be a freelancer on Upwork, and you can sign up for it. So there are no restrictions in that sense. If you want to see how to apply for Upwork, then if you search for my videos, I'll link to it down below. I've made a video of how to sign up for Upwork and uh, where I go through it and actually sign up so you can uh, follow along. So yeah, please sign up because it's, it's a great place to uh, do any type of freelancing for freelance translation as well. I think Pros is a better website, but you do have to pay for Pros and you don't for Upwork. So, uh, so yeah, feel free to check it out. Anyway, that's it for now. I've gone on long enough with all this video. And uh, but hopefully you found it somewhat useful and thank you so much for watching my video. Please don't forget to click like if you do because this helps me with future videos because I know what works and what doesn't. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and you can get more videos about being a freelancer, being a freelance translator directly to you. Also right next to subscribe if you click on the bell button then you'll be notified when there's a new video and you don't have to check to see if there's a new video or not and wonder if maybe you missed something along the way. Also, I offer certain services as in looking over your resume, looking over your profile page or your website, stuff like that. I also offer one-on-one -on -one consulting services. You can find all that information down in the description below. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.